Welcome to my class. I am Pamela Jasmine. Today I am going to teach a short story, The Model Millionaire by Oscar Wilde. Let's start. Unless one is wealthy, there is no use in being a charming fellow. Romance is the privilege of the rich, not the profession of the unemployed. The poor should be practical and prosaic. It is better to have a permanent income than to be fascinating. These are the great truths of modern life uh, which Hughie Erskine never realized. So here uh, the introduction is about uh, Hughie Erskine. Yeah, so uh, according to the author, unless uh, or uh, if uh, one person is not rich, uh, there is no use of uh, being charming or uh, uh, handsome. And uh, romance is the privilege of the rich. So romance is the advantage or the right of the rich, uh, not the profession of the unemployed. So romance is meant only for the rich people, not for unemployed people. And the poor should be practical and prosaic. Poor should be practical and uh, straightforward. And it is better to have a permanent income than to be fascinating. Uh, so we should have a permanent income than to be uh, attractive or be interesting. So it is a must to have a permanent income. There are the great, uh, these are the great truths of modern life uh, which uh, Hughie Eskin never realized. These are the facts of modern life. But uh, the hero of this story, Hughie Eskin, did not realize that. And uh, poor Hughie. Intellectually, we must admit, he was not of much importance. He never said a brilliant uh, or even an ill-natured thing in his life. So here, Hughie Eskin is a well-natured human being. So intellectually, uh, he was not uh, of much importance. Uh, he is not that clever or uh, intelligent. And he never said uh, a brilliant or even an ill-natured thing. He did not say anything brilliant or a bad thing. But then he was wonderfully good looking with his crisp brown hair, his clear cut profile and his grey eyes. He was very very charming, very handsome with his crisp brown hair and clear cut profile. He had very charming features and grey eyes. He was as popular with men as uh, he was with women. He was very popular among men as well as women. And he had every accomplishment except that of making money. Uh, he was very, uh, he, he, was, uh, he had all the achievements except uh, making money. He was uh, not uh, good at making money. His uh, father had bequeathed him his cavalry sword uh, and a history of uh, the Peninsular War in 15 volumes. That was his inheritance. His father has given him uh, by his will a, a cavalry sword and uh, the history of, uh, uh, history of uh, Peninsular War in 15 volumes. That was uh, the sole uh, inheritance of uh, Hughie Eskin and uh, Hughie, hung, uh, Hughie hung the first uh, over his looking glass uh, but the second on a shelf between Ruff's Guide uh, and uh, Bailey's magazine and lived on 200 a year uh, that an old aunt allowed him. So what he had inherited uh, were uh, uh, a sword and a history of Peninsular War in 15 volumes. So he uh, hung the sword over the looking glass and uh, the um, volume of uh, wars that means uh, that uh, war history in, in the shelf and uh, rough guide uh, sorry on a shelf between rough guide uh, and uh, Bailey's magazine. So where he kept uh, the magazines and books and all no. There he kept uh, the uh, volume uh, I mean the history of Peninsular War in 15 volumes uh, inherited from his father. Then 
and lived on 200 a year uh, uh, that uh, an old aunt allowed him so only income of a uh, hugeous kin was uh, the allotment of an old aunt that was uh, 200 pounds a year then here uh, he had tried everything he was not a lazy character he tried everything but uh, he could not succeed he had uh, gone to gone to on the stock exchange for six months uh, but uh, what was a butterfly to do among bulls and bears he had tried uh, that uh, stock exchange that means uh, share business uh, but he was only a butterfly he was only a beginner uh, and uh, he could not do anything among the bulls and bears bulls and bears are the so much experienced people in this stock exchange <coughs> then he had been a, ten, a tea merchant for a little longer but had soon tired of uh, Pekko and uh, Sao Chong. So he had tried tea business uh, but uh, he was tired of the uh, tea brands uh, such as uh, uh, this uh, Pekko and Su Chong. So Chong and Pekko are the uh, uh, black tea, black teas uh, that means types of black tea. Then, then he had tried uh, selling dry sherry, dry sherry is a wine. Uh, that means a kind of wine that did not answer the sherry was a little too dry this wine was too dry that means uh, it did not have much alcohol content so he was tired of that also he did not succeed in wine business uh, or tea business or uh, stock exchange then ultimately he became nothing a delightful in ineffectual young man with a perfect profile and no profession Finally, he did not become anything. A very charming, very interesting uh, young man. Uh, a delightful, very happy, delightful person. But ineffectual. Ineffectual means not effective in any uh, business. Uh, with a perfect profile and no profession. His profile is very good, uh, very good looking. But no profession. To make matters worse, uh, he was in love. The girl he loved was Laura Merton, the daughter of a retired colonel who had lost his temper and his digestion in India and had never found either of them again. Laura adored him and he was ready to kiss her shoestrings. They were the handsomest couple in London and had not a penny piece between them. The colonel was very fond of Hughie but would not hear of any engagement. So to make matters worse, uh, Hughie was in love with Laura Merton. Laura Merton was the daughter of a retired colonel who had lost his temper and digestion in India. That means uh, he was very short tempered uh, and uh, he did not have proper digestion. He lost these two, two things in India and he had never got it back. So that was the condition. and. Uh, uh, Laura Merton adored uh, Hughie and in return Hughie was ready to kiss her shoestrings. They loved each other so deeply but uh, they did not have a penny piece between them. They were not having enough money to live and uh, the colonel was very fond of Hughie but uh, there was uh, uh, he was not ready to get them engaged. Come to me, my boy, when you have got 10,000 pounds of your own. And uh, we will see about it, he used to say. And Hughie looked very gloom on these days, on those days, and had to go to Laura for consolation. So this colonel, uh, Laura's father, uh, told uh, Hughie to make uh, 10,000 pounds of his own. Then uh, he would think about their engagement. Then uh, Hughie became very gloomy and he went to Laura for consolation. One morning as he was on his way to Holland Park uh, where the Mertens lived, he dropped in to see a great friend of his, Alan Trevor. Trevor was a painter but he was also an artist uh, and artists are rather rare. One morning uh, Hughie was uh, going to Holland Park uh, where Laura Merton lived. On the way, he dropped in to see one of his close friends, Alan Trevor. 
Alan Trevor was a painter and an artist. Personally, he was a strange rough fellow with a freckled face and a red ragged beard. However, when he took up the brush, uh, he was a real master and his pictures were eagerly sought after. So, this uh, uh, Alan Trevor was a, uh, a painter as well as an artist, but uh, he was a very rough and strange fellow with a freckled face. Freckled face means a face with uh, brown patches because of uh, exposure to sun or we can say tanned face and a red rugged beard and red colored beard and however when he took up the brush he was a real master he was a master in his uh, work that means when he takes uh, the brush for painting he was uh, he becomes a very uh, powerful and his pictures were eagerly sought after that means his pictures were in great demand he had been very much attracted by Hughie at first. It must be acknowledged entirely on account of his personal charm. The only people uh, a painter should know, he used to say, are people who are beautiful. People who are an artistic pleasure to look at uh, and an intellectual repose to talk to. So Hughie, uh, this uh, uh, Alan Trevor uh, likes uh, Hughie because uh, Hughie was very charming. This, according to Alan Trevor, artist likes only people who are charming and uh, the people uh, and uh, uh, are people who are beautiful, people who are an artistic pleasure to look at. They should have an artistic touch, and uh, people should be beautiful. Such people are uh, fond of uh, these painters, and. Uh, Men who are dandies and women who are darlings rule the world. At least they should do so. So men who are uh, very smartly dressed. Dandies means very smartly dressed and uh, women who are darlings. Very pretty and very attractive rule the world. At least they should do so. However, after he got to know Hughie better, he liked him quite as much for his great buoyant spirit and his generous reckless nature and had given him the permanent entry to his studio. When uh, uh, Alan Trevor came to know more about Hughie, he liked him more because of his uh, uh, buoyant, buoyant spirit, that means uh, his uh, cheerful nature and his generous reckless nature, his uh, generous innocent uh, careless nature and uh, had given him the permanent entry to his studio. So uh, this Alan Trevor liked Hughie because of his uh, nature and uh, he was uh, given free entry uh, to his studio always. When Hughie came in, he found Trevor putting the finishing touches to a wonderful life-size picture of a beggar man. The beggar himself was uh, standing on a raised platform in a corner of the studio. He was a wizened old man uh, with a face like a uh, wrinkled uh, parchment and a most uh, piteous expression. Over his shoulders was flung a coarse brown cloak, uh, all tears and tatters. His thick boots were patched and cobbled and with one hand uh, he leant on a rough stick uh, while with the other he held out uh, his battered hat, hat for arms. So when Hughie entered the studio, Alan Trevor was uh, giving the final touches of a wonderful lifelike, uh, a life-size picture of a beggar man. So uh, Alan Trevor was uh, um, giving uh, the final uh, touches of a beggar, uh, I mean of the picture of a beggar man. The beggar himself, the model that was standing there in his studio, uh, standing on a raised platform in a corner of the studio. So he was a wizened old man. Wizened means wrinkled, very old and there were wrinkles uh, and uh, uh, with a face like wrinkled parchment. So it is uh, the face was like a um, uh, wrinkled material and uh, a most uh, piteous expression. Expression was pity, piteous. 
that means uh, we feel pity for him over his shoulders was flung a coarse brown clock so over his shoulders there was a clock that means the over uh, that means outer cloth was uh, there all tears and tatters the outer rob was uh, tattered and uh, torn and uh, his thick boots were patched and cobbled and uh, the boots were uh, patched that means stitched and uh, cobbled uh, repaired so many times uh, and with one hand he leant on a rough stick while with the other he held out his battered hat for arms so the beggar was uh, catching a stick uh, in one hand for support uh, and in the other hand uh, he was holding a hat uh, to get arms to get money from the people what an amazing model whispered hugi as he shook hands with his friend an amazing model shouted trevor at the top of his voice i should think so such beggars as he are not to be met with every day uh, when he entered the room hugi remarked uh, that what an amazing model then trevor laughed uh, and uh, an amazing model shouted trevor uh, at the top of his voice then trevor uh, shouted at his top of his voice uh, oh amazing model um, i should think so such beggars as he are not to be met with every day we cannot uh, meet uh, Uh, such such beggars every day and uh, a living valesquez valesquez uh, is was a famous spanish artist known for the portraits and uh, my stars what an etching rembrandt rembrandt a famous dutch painter would have made of him so uh, uh, he was uh, uh, telling that uh, this uh, beggar model of the beggar was an amazing model poor old chap said hugi how miserable he look but i suppose to you painters his face is his fortune uh, then uh, he uh, he felt pity hugi felt pity for this model how miserable he looks uh, poor old chap and uh, but i suppose uh, to you painters his face is his fortune so his face is uh, fortunate to be a model for the painters certainly replied trevor you don't want a beggar to look happy do you ah uh, then uh, uh, trevor was asking if uh, hugi did not want uh, a beggar to look uh, cheerful or look happy how much does a model get for a sitting asked hugi as he found himself a comfortable seat on a divan ah uh, when uh, uh, hugi was sitting uh, on a sofa on a divan he asked uh, uh, trevor how much uh, Uh, um, how much uh, does a model get for a day or a, for a sitting a shilling an hour so the reward is paid per hour a shilling per hour and how much do you get for your picture alan uh, then he asked uh, how much do you get for your picture oh for this i go i get 2000 for this picture i get 2000 pounds guineas painters poets and physicians always get uh, guineas so uh, not in pounds in guineas guineas are uh, gold coin well i think the model should have a percentage cried hugi laughing they were quite as hard as you do then uh, hugi just uh, he was uh, joking he was telling that this uh, models also should get a percentage because they are also working hard as you do nonsense nonsense why look at the trouble of laying on the paint alone and standing all day long at one's easel it's all very well hugi for you to talk but i assure you that uh, there are moments when art almost attains to the dignity of uh, na- uh, manual labor but you mustn't chatter i'm very busy smoke a cigarette and keep quiet ah uh, then uh, nonsense nonsense why look at the trouble of laying on the paint alone and standing all day long at one's easel so here he is telling that uh, so painting is a, a tedious job uh, we have to uh, stand the whole day and uh, it's all very well hugi for you to talk uh, but i assure you that there are moments when art almost attains to be the uh, to the dignity of manual labor you can talk like that but art is also a manual labor one day art would also attain the dignity 
of the uh, prestige of a of the of manual labor but you mustn't chatter then he uh, see alan was very busy and uh, he uh, told hughie not to talk anymore you can smoke a cigarette and uh, sit there in a comfortable manner after some time the servant came in and told trevor that uh, the frame maker wanted to speak to him don't run away hughie he said as he went out i'll be back in a moment ah uh, then uh, that time uh, the messenger the servant came and uh, uh, called alan that uh, one frame maker was uh, waiting for him so uh, he had to meet uh, the frame maker then uh, alan told uh, hughie not to run away not to go and uh, he went to meet that the old beggar man uh, took advantage of trevor's absence to rest for a moment uh, on a wooden bench uh, that was behind him he looked so forlorn and wretched that uh, hughie could not help pitying him and felt in his pocket to see what money he had all he could find was a sovereign and some coppers poor old fellow he thought to himself he wants it more than i do but it means sir no handsome for a fortnight and he walked across the studio and slipped the sovereign into the beggar's hand when trevor left uh, the beggar took advantage uh, to take rest on a wooden bench behind him the beggar was a uh, was, was a wretched and forlorn person which means uh, he looked so weak and tired and uh, hughie felt pity for him and uh, he felt like helping that person he searched in his pocket and uh, he got uh, uh, and uh, there was one sovereign and uh, some copper that means one pound and some uh, uh, some sh- sh- uh, shilling and uh, then uh, he thought uh, that uh, this person this beggar was in w- was in more need of uh, this money than him but uh, if he has given that uh, sovereign to that person that beggar he had to cut short uh, some luxuries or uh, something uh, in this fortnight fortnight means two weeks but still uh, he uh, uh, took the sovereign took the pound and uh, gave it to the beggar the old man started and a faint smile uh, flitted across his uh, withered lips thank you sir he said thank you the old man uh, thanked him and there was a, a mild smile on his face then trevor arrived and hugi took his leave blushing a little at what he had done he spent the day with flora got a charming scolding for his extravagance uh, and had to walk home uh, then trevor arrived and uh, uh, after some time hugi took leave that means hugi left the place uh, blushing a li- little that means he felt happy for his deed that means uh, he had uh, given the beggar one uh, sovereign so he felt uh, good and he spent the day with laura and laura scolded him for his extravagance he spent that money oh, for overspending that night he strolled into the pallet club about 11 o'clock and found trevor sitting by himself in the smoking room uh, room uh, drinking hock and seltzer so the night uh, then at night uh, he went to pallet club uh, where he could meet uh, alan he was sitting in the smoking room and uh, drinking a uh, uh, hock and seltzer that is an alcohol brand well alan did you get the picture finish all right he said as he lit his cigarette ah uh, then uh, uh, he asked hugi asked alan whether he could finish that picture that day finish and framed my boy answered trevor and by the by you have made a conquest the old model you saw is quite devoted to you i had to tell him all about you who you are where you live what your income is what prospects you have ah uh, then uh, Uh, f- finished and framed he had uh, made the uh, i finished the picture and even framed uh, trevor answered uh, and then one more thing uh, you have made a conquest the old model uh, uh, took all the details he asked about himself he is devoted to you the old man a model was devoted to you and uh, i had to tell all about you i, I had to tell him all about you, uh, you know, who you are where you live Uh, and uh, his income and prospects and everything 
"My dear Ellen," cried Hughie, "I shall probably find him waiting for me when I go home. But of course you are only joking. Poor old wretch! I wish I could do something for him. I think it is dreadful that anyone should do so miserable. I have got heaps of old clothes at home. Do you think he would care for any of them? Why, his rags were falling to bits." Ah, then, my dear Ellen," cried Hughie. "I shall probably find him waiting for me when I go home." So, uh, when uh, Hughie uh, went home, no, he found that uh, person, that old beggar, uh, waiting for him. Uh, but of course, you are only joking, poor old wretch. I wish I could do something for him. Then Hughie wanted to do something more for him, and he he asked. Uh, he had some old clothes in his cupboard, and. Uh, if he wanted that old clothes uh, he was ready to give that person because his rags were falling to bits uh, and uh, his clothes were torn and uh, it was uh, falling falling down in bits uh. but he looks splendid in them said trevor i wouldn't paint him in a frock coat for anything what do you call rags i call romance what seems poverty to you is picturesqueness to me however i'll tell him of your offer ah uh, then he is telling that uh, he um, uh, tre- for trevor no uh, the beggar looked uh, very good very beautiful in that tra- rags but i wouldn't paint him in a frock coat for anything so if he is well dressed and in his coat and suit i cannot uh, paint him i won't paint him and uh, what you call rags i call romance for me this rags uh, are romance and what uh, seems poverty to you is picturesqueness to me so i am um, see you feel that it is poverty and i can make pictures out of it however i'll tell him of your offer i'll tell him about your offer you are ready to give him old clothes i'll tell him about that allen said hugi seriously you painters are a heartless lot an artist heart is his head replied trevor and besides our business is to realize the world as we see it not to reform it as we know it and now tell me how laura is the old model was quite interested in her ah then uh, allen said hugi seriously you people are heartless you painters are heartless uh, then uh, trevor answered a uh, uh, paint artist heart is his head uh, then Uh, and besides then uh, this artist business uh, are to paint or uh, re- um, see business to is to realize the world as we see it we have to make pictures of the world as we see it we needn't reform it reformation is not our work and how now tell me how laura is now you tell me about laura how is she and even the old model is interested in her you don't mean to say you talk to him about her said hugi then hugi was asking didn't you tell anything about laura you you didn't tell right certainly i did he knows uh, all about the relentless colonel the lovely laura and the 10000 pounds so he said uh, alan said i i have uh, told him everything about laura and about the harsh and cruel colonel and the 10000 pounds You told that old beggar all my private affairs," cried Hughie, looking very red and angry. Then Hughie got angry. Uh, you told uh, that uh, beggar, old beggar, about uh, my private affairs. He got angry. My dear boy," said Trevor, smiling. "The old beggar, as you call him, is one of the richest men in Europe. He could buy all London tomorrow without overdrawing his account. He has a house in every capital." dines of gold plate and can prevent russia going to war when he chooses then uh, see trevor was uh, explaining the position of the old beggar my dear boy said trevor smiling that old beggar as you call him you call him old beggar but he is one of the richest men in europe he could buy all london tomorrow without overdrawing his account without uh, uh, having any debt he could uh, buy the whole london and he is very powerful he has a house in every capital and he eats uh, of gold plate 
and can prevent Russia going to war when he chooses. So he is so powerful. He can he can even prevent war. What on earth do you mean? Exclaimed Hughie. What I say, said Trevor. The old man you saw today in the studio was Baron Hosberg. He is a great friend of mine. Buys all my pictures and that sort of thing, and gave me a commission a month ago to paint him as a beggar. And I must say he made a magnificent figure in his rags, or perhaps I should say in my rags. They are an old suit I got in uh, got in Spain. So here, uh, Hughie was surprised to hear about uh, this person. This old beggar was uh, Baron Hosberg. Uh, one of the richest uh, uh, men in europe uh, and uh, he was uh, a great friend of allen and uh, he buys all the pictures of uh, allen and uh, he appointed allen uh, to paint uh, him as a uh, beggar and the rags uh, uh, he um, uh, see he was telling no Hughie was telling that his rags were torn to bits uh, and uh, that uh, that was an old suit of uh, Alan Trevor uh, 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 which uh, he got in Spain. Baron Hosberg cried Hughie good heavens I gave him a sovereign and he sank into an armchair the picture of dismay. Uh, then uh, when he heard the name of uh, Baron Hosberg, Hughie was uh, about to faint. He was telling, oh my God, uh, see, I gave him a sovereign and he fell into the armchair. Uh, so, uh, the picture of dismay. Gave him a sovereign, shouted Trevor and he burst into a roar of laughter. My dear boy, you will never see it again. I think you might have told him, uh, told me, Alan said Hughie sulkily and not have let me make such a fool of myself. Then uh, uh, when Hughie told him, told Alan that he has given him a sovereign, then Alan burst into a roar of laughter and said that, uh, so I think uh, you might, uh, then I'll, um, Hughie told, you should have told me about him and uh, then I should not have made a fool of myself. Well, to begin with Hughie, said Trevor. It never entered my mind that you went about disturb, distributing arms in that reckless way. I can understand you are kissing a pretty model but you are giving a sovereign to an ugly ugly one by, uh, by Joe. No. Besides, sir, the fact is that I really was not at home today to anyone and when you came in, I didn't know whether Hosberg would like his name mentioned. You know he was in full dress. Uh, so, Hughie, uh, well, Hughie, said Trevor, it never entered my mind that you went about distributing arms uh, in that reckless way. Uh, I did not uh, know, I did not even think that uh, you would distribute arms uh, in that way. And uh, then I can, uh, I can understand you kissing a beautiful model, but I did not uh, even imagine uh, of you giving a sovereign to an ugly one. And by Joe, no. Besides, uh, uh, the fact is that I really was not at home today to anyone. I did not allow any visitor today because uh, Baron Hosberg was here. I did not know whether he would like to mention his name because he was not in his full dress. What a duffer he, uh, he must think me, said Hughie. Uh, then uh, this uh, Hughie, uh, Hughie, uh, Hughie was feeling sad that... Uh, this person, um, this Osberg would think uh, that uh, uh, Hughie was a duffer or uh, an idiot. Not at all. He was in the highest spirit after you left. Kept chuckling to himself and rubbing his old wrinkled hands uh, together. I couldn't make out why he was so interested to know all about you. But I see it all now. He'll invest your sovereign for you, Hughie. Pay you the interest every six months and have a capital story to tell after dinner. Then uh, Hughie, uh, that not at all, he won't think uh, about you like that. He was so much interested in you. After you left, he was in his good spirits, uh, chuckling to himself. He was laughing to himself and rub rubbing his old hands uh, together. So uh, he was so much interested to know about you. 
and uh, but i see it all now i can understand at first he did not understand why this beggar was so much why uh, um, hosberg was so much interested to know about hugi but now um, allen could understand then he will in then uh, he was uh, making fun of uh, hugi by telling that he will in, invest your sovereign for you hugi and you will get interest in every 6 months uh, and have a capital you can make a capital uh, and uh, i have a Uh, capital story to tell you after dinner i'll tell a story uh, a good story to you i am an unlucky devil growled hugi the best thing i can do is to go to bed and my dear allen you mustn't tell anyone i shouldn't dare show my face in the row uh, then uh, he felt very sad because uh, uh, he he made a fool of himself i am an unlucky fellow and uh, the best thing i can do is to go to bed you please don't tell anything about my uh, anyone about my foolery then i cannot face anyone nonsense it reflects the highest credit on your uh, philanthropic spirit hugi and don't run away have another cigarette and you can talk about laura as much as you like then uh, he was telling don't uh, nonsense uh, see it is not like that it reflects the highest credit on your philanthropic spirit what is philanthropic means uh, uh, that means uh, loving nature that means love for others uh, that uh, that is philanthropic so there is high credit for that for your nature for your loving nature uh, and don't run away don't go away uh, have another cigarette and be comfortable and you talk about laura however hugi uh yugi wouldn't stop but walked home feeling very unhappy and uh, leaving alan trevor in in fits of laughter but yugi did not wait there anymore he walked uh, towards his home and uh, leaving alan trevor in his uh, uh, fits of laughter the next morning as he was at breakfast uh, the servant brought him up a card on which uh, was written monsieur gustav norden on behalf of uh, monsieur lee baron hosberg so the next morning when uh, uh, this uh, hugi was having breakfast uh, his uh, servant brought a card on which it was written monsieur gustav norden on behalf of uh, monsieur lee baron hosberg i suppose he w- he has come for an apology said hugi to himself and he told the servant to show the visitor up uh, then uh, uh, see uh, then uh, Uh, he thought that uh, this person has come for an apology because uh, hugi had given such a uh, millionaire a sovereign as a uh, as an arm so that's why he thought that uh, this person had come here uh, to get the apology of hugi and uh, then uh, he told the servant to uh, send him an old gentleman with gold spectacles and gray hair came into the room and said in a slight french accent have i the honor of addressing monsieur askin ah uh, then uh, he uh, the old man uh, an old man came with go- gold spectacles and gray hair he came in into the room and said in a slight french accent have i the honor of addressing monsieur askin ah uh, then he asked whether he could uh, a uh, meet uh, monsieur erskin who gibbed i have come from baron hosberg he continued the baron uh, then he introduced himself i have come from uh, baron hosberg i have come i beg sir that you will offer him my sincerest apologies stammered hugi then hugi started apologizing you please uh, offer my uh, uh, sincerest apology the baron said the old gentleman with a smile has commissioned me to bring you this letter and he extended a sealed a sealed envelope then uh, uh, this old person continued the baron uh, uh, see has commissioned me has appointed me to hand over uh, this letter to you and he extended and he offered a, a sealed envelope on the outside uh, it was written a wedding present to Hugh Erskine and laura merton from an old beggar and uh, inside was a check for uh, uh, 10000 pounds so uh, the envelope contained uh, the uh, gift uh, of the wedding wedding gift uh, from the baron 
and when they got married uh, alan trevor was the best man and uh, the baron made a speech at the wedding breakfast then they got married uh, and uh, Uh, see alan trevor was the best man best man means uh, the person who supports the uh, bridegroom and uh, then the baron made a speech at the wedding breakfast and uh, millionaire models remarked alan are rare enough but by jo model millionaires are rarer still then alan trevor remarked that uh, millionaire models so they are rare enough but uh, a uh, model millionaire are rarer still so here uh, we can see that uh, uh, see the q uh, gives a uh, good action is rewarded so uh, see always remember that whatever good uh, deeds we do it will be rewarded now or later so that's all uh, good uh, good actions uh, will be rewarded that's all uh, if you like this video please like share and subscribe Thank you for watching. God bless.